coming up on Network Africa. Burundi parliament plans to reject AU's intervention force, describes the troops as an invasion force. Police in Paris detain two suspects in connection with the bomb scare on Air France. And Lagos commuters lament road congestion as the federal government prepares to complete half field roads and bridges. This is Network Africa coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Adeshawa Josh. Before we take you through today's lineup, let's quickly bring you some of the stories that made headlines over the weekend across Africa, from Rwanda to the Democratic Republic of Congo to Tunisia. These are your weekend stories across the continent. Showed on Saturday that Rwandans voted overwhelmingly to support changes to the constitution that would allow President Paul Kagame to extend his term in office, possibly until 2034. Kagame would be able to run again in 2017 after his second term ends. He has been president since the year 2000, but effectively in control since his rebel force marched into Kigali in 1994 to end genocide. In Congo, more than 27 high-profile Congolese figures, including Moaz Katumbi, considered the main opposition candidate in next year's presidential polls have formed a coalition term. Kabila, who is constitutionally barred from seeking a third term in office, has not commented publicly, despite critics' accusations that he is attempting to cling to power. Then, in North Africa, the United States Embassy in Tunisia has warned its citizens to avoid a major shopping mall in the capital, Tunis, because of a reported threat of a potential militant attack there. Tunisia is under a state of emergency following a suicide bomb attack on a presidential guard bus in Tunis last month that followed two major militant gun attacks in a Tunis museum and a beach hotel targeting foreign tourists. Finally, in West Africa, Niger's government has arrested nine military officers for planning a coup. President Mahmoudou Yusufu said in a televised address that the alleged coup plotters had planned to use area firepower and had prevented the movement of military assets from the capital Niamey to the southern region of Difa. Isufu was elected in 2011, a year after a coup, and is running for a second term in polls scheduled for February the 21st. Political tension is already high, with critics accusing him of repression and expressing doubts about the latest claims. Well, let's take you through today's lineup and bring you the latest on the Air France bomb scare. A couple has been arrested in connection with that incident on uh, Air, flight, uh, Air France flights forced to make an emergency landing in Kenya on Sunday. Well, police in Paris detained a 58-year-old in custody on Monday. He is believed to be an ex-policeman from the Indian Ocean island of Reunion. His wife has also been questioned as a witness. Air France says... The fake bomb was made of cardboard and a kitchen timer and posed no danger. The Boeing 777 was on its way from Mauritius to Paris when the suspicious object was found in a plane toilet and uh, the decision was made uh, to make an emergency landing. The plane was then evacuated at Mombasa Airport in Kenya. An Air France flight from Mauritius to Paris was prompted to make an emergency landing in Kenyan port city of Mombasa after a suspicious device was found by a passenger in the toilet. The suspicious object, made out of cardboard and paper and contained a timer, was harmless and caused a false alarm. The airline's chief executive, Frederick Gage, said that the device must have been planted during the flight. Mombasa County Commissioner Nelson Marwa said the passengers had departed in another plane sent by Air France to pick them but an undisclosed number of them who were being questioned by authorities had stayed behind, but did not say if they were under arrest. Air France says they plan to take legal action over the incident without giving further details. 
The 459 passengers and 14 crew on board flight AF-463 were evacuated using the emergency slides after the plane landed. Police Inspector General Joseph Bonnet said on his Twitter account that the device was retrieved from the aircraft by explosives experts from the Navy and Directorate of Criminal Investigations. Kenyan Interior Minister Joseph Nkaisari, speaking with the press at Mombasa's International Airport, said they were in touch with Mauritius to find out how security screening of passengers was done. Air France said in a statement that it had immediately decided to reinforce the security measures in Mauritius after the incident, which follows three bomb alerts in the United States in the last few weeks. Now let's bring in VOS Jill Craig. She joins me now from Nairobi with the latest on this issue. Thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. What more do we know about this arrest and what do we know about these people? Well, what, what I'm hearing from the Kenyan authorities and the police commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, the police spokesman, is that basically all of the information has now been given to French authorities. The Kenyans are a bit reluctant to actually say specifics um, in terms of what else they, uh, they may have uh, sort of uncovered during their investigations. But what we do know is that uh, there was one suspect. There were, I believe, six suspects who were questioned in, uh, in Kenya. And then, of course, the one that you mentioned in your program, uh, the gentleman who is believed to be a former former police officer mm -hmm. uh, has been detained in France upon arrival at Charles de Gaulle. So uh, that, that's what's known right now. Um, and like I said, the Kenyan authorities are saying that everything has been passed over to the French at this point. So has there been any official confirmation on how the suspected object got on board? What is it exactly? And if everything was screened and wasn't suspected before the flight took off, how did it get there? Well, to answer your second question first, the understanding is that because there were no explosives in this device, and the device is believed to have been made out of cardboard, paper, and a simple kitchen timer, so because those objects on their own volition would go through security with no problem, um, the, the idea is that, you know, the, the security procedures in Mauritius, you know, they, they basically were, were doing what they needed to do. They did not detect explosives, um, which, which uh, you know, the, the fake, the, the device was shown to be fake. So. Uh, uh, that would be an answer to your second question. Um, in terms of how it actually got in in the on the uh, aircraft, I. Th I think that's all sort of being uh, determined right now. Um, they believe that a passenger did bring the uh, the fake device onto the aircraft. Uh, I don't think that they know exactly when uh, this happened, and I don't think they understand the motivations quite yet. They're still trying to figure out those details as we speak. Obviously, it was meant to scare, and uh, well, let's see how that pans out in the next couple of days as we keep an eye on the investigation. Thank you so much, Jill, there for us from Nairobi. Thank you for speaking to us on Network Africa. Well, let's take a short break on the program. When we come back, Burundi Parliament plans to reject AUP's keeping force. We have details for you in just a moment. <laughs> 